We're very interested in IL-2 in neuroblastoma based on uh, NK cell activation. And the Siopen group has previously run uh, a dose escalation uh, trial uh, with IL-2, uh, and we were interested in the use of the subcutaneous application. And so we defined the dose level, and uh, we found a very favorable toxicity profile and have published this data in GCO. And uh, when we learned about the important LSU study, uh, we thought uh, that uh, we would love to switch from the intravenous use, which is, has a quite an important toxicity profile, to the sub -Q dose, where, which was very favorable in, um, as a monodrug in our first trial. And so we combined the chimeric 14 ho antibody that we were using uh, in Europe and have uh, recloned in Europe into CHO cells in combination with sub-Q IL-2. And this is the background of the story, uh, why we investigated uh, this particular combination. Our uh, patient population is uh, high-risk neuroblastoma. And the dose escalation study I referred to, uh, to was tested in children with high-risk neuroblastoma. And the reason to uh, consider the, the use of sub-Q dosing is really the much more favorable toxicity profile previously reported. And uh, when we have been running the IL-2 uh, sub-Q trial uh, with the dose escalation, all our patients were in an outpatient setting and uh, we had no admittance to the hospital and uh, this is very much in opposite to the intravenous use and that was really the reason to test this in combination with the chimeric 1418 uh, antibody with the previously uh, found dose um, that appeared to be very favorable. Our primary findings, well now uh, we have the the study concluded, it was a randomized trial uh, with uh, 400 patients, fully powered, and we uh, were thinking on the basis of NK cell activation that this will be a synergistic effect together with the antibody, and we're uh, estimating a roughly 12.5 um, yeah, superiority in the IL-2 arm. And the experience in our trial was a very pronounced toxicity profile, uh, very, uh, very different from the single agent use that we have uh, previously um, undertaken and uh, found that in combination with uh, the antibody treatment um, only 60% of the patients could uh, get the full delivery of immunotherapy. And the outcome of the trial was that uh, the two arms are completely superimposable, so we could not show any advantage in this particular setting of adding IL-2. We are, have currently ongoing studies because we are very much interested on improving the antibody delivery in neuroblastoma patients, and our current interest is to prolong the infusion time because uh, the, ultimately uh, the Siopen group in Europe is aiming for a delivery of the antibody ideally in an outpatient setting. And we have very promising first results and they are shown in the poster session here, here at the meeting. And we are currently have an ongoing trial also in the frontline setting as well as in the relapsed refectory. I think the take-home message was that uh, we have shown that the response rate with antibody uh, was alone was very high. So we had a combined overall response rate of 51%, but when we also looked into the split arms plus minus IL-2, we equally found uh, this very promising response rate in patients that still had residual disease after um, high-dose chemotherapy and stem cell transplantation. So I think uh, it seems that this uh, antibody is um, very uh, efficient and has a very good drug uh, activity and this is promising for the future.